Hey, this is Kathy Dam, and I'm going to run a quick video on how to use pivot tables in Google Sheets after you've collected SLO data using Google Forms. Um, use psychology as an example, and don't be overwhelmed by the fact that we have a lot of data in our Google Form. We've been doing this for a number of years. So this is what the Google Form might look like, something similar, and you'll need to have administrative access, um, so editing access to the, the Google Form. And so once you have your data collected, you'll go to the responses button. Then you will click on this um, Google Sheets icon. If it hasn't already generated a sheet, this will um, ask you if you want to generate a new sheet or use an existing sheet. So you'll have to make that decision. We've been doing this for a while, so we already have a sheet attached to our Google form. So again, we have lots of data, lots of years of data. Um, if I want to run a pivot table, what I'm going to do is click insert pivot table. Um, it defaults to the entire range of that first um, responses. So you probably go ahead and leave it like that and click new sheet, not existing sheet, because you don't want to muddy up your existing data. So you click new sheet, create, and it's going to default to an empty table. And we're going to go ahead and fill it in. It isn't necessarily intuitive. So follow these steps. The first thing you want to do is add your courses as rows. So you come over here to rows, add, and this is going to be the name of the course or the number, however you did it in your form. Now we're going to add columns, but you don't want to add columns. We're going to add values, and it will default to adding columns. So next will be values, and you're going to add. Here, we're going to start with the total number of students that were in the class or took the assessment. And then we're going to add another value, which is the number of students that passed. So again, these will be the titles that you used in your own form, but this will kind of be what you need to start with. And now I'm going to add. Um, my own formula over here so that it can do the math for me because really what we want the percent of pass is this column my, divided by this column and i don't have to do math myself so what you do is you um, put the cursor in the cell where we want your results and i'm going to type in the equal sign and that's telling google i want it to do math and you'll see google's quite clever it's thinking do you want to do column c2 divided by column b2 and that's exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Now, let's say it offered you something that you didn't want. Um, here's what you would do. You'd say equals, and then you click on this column, hit the divide sign, and then click on this column. That's exactly what we wanted it to do. You're going to click on the cells and not type in numbers because we want it to be a reference. So if the numbers change, um, this will get updated automatically. So I'm going to hit, it, hit enter. And then you'll see that if I click in this cell, oh, I did it earlier. Well, often Google will ask you, do you want to do this for the rest of the cells? And you click the check mark to say yes. If it fails to do that, as it is in this case, what you're going to do is you see this little black or this little filled in box over here. You're going to grab it and see how my cursor turns to a black cross. You're going to drag it down. And therefore, it's calculating that for every cell. So this one did 13 divided by 18, 114 divided by 151. So it does all that for me. Now, these are percents. So I'm going to click on this D column. So all of them are highlighted. And then I'm going to click on percent so that I can see it as a percent. Now, this is actually several classes across many years. So I want to start filtering. Now, I, some departments make a new form for each year. In psychology, we make this, we use the, reuse the same form. So we have to tell it which year we're looking at. So I'm going to add a filter. And um, it's going to be the semester of data collection. And so now it's going to show me all of them. I want to clear because I don't want all of them. I just would like spring of 2022. So I clicked spring of 2022. Now watch my numbers change on the left when I hit OK. See, they changed. Now this is some leftover math, and that's OK. I'll just leave that there. But now this is just spring 2022. But this is all of my classes, online and face-to-face. Um, -face. So I would like to separate those out as well. So there's a couple ways you can do that. One thing I like to do just to make it easy is I copy the whole table and paste it on the same page so that I can manipulate it. So let's say I want this one to be the face-to-face -face classes. So I'm just making a note to myself. Face-to-face -face classes are up there. And I want this to be the online classes. So now I'm going to click back onto this um, 
Google form over here. If you're over or off the Google form, it's harder for you to do appropriate filters. So to filter, you just want to be somewhere in the Google, sorry, in the pivot table so that you can add a filter. And I want to add a filter to only look at face-to-face -face classes. So here's the filter that I did this semester and now I want to add. And this is where I had asked people to tell me the course modality. So if you didn't ask that question, then you're going to have some trouble kind of separating out. But hopefully you asked that question in your form. And now I'm going to clear them all and say, let's just look at the fully face-to-face -face classes. So um, this number dropped drastically because it was during COVID. We had fewer face-to-face -face classes, so we only had these. But these are the percent success rates on um, for the SLOs recorded for these classes. These are the face-to-face. -face. Now this one I want to do just online. So I'm gonna click over here somewhere into this table. Now notice how when I click on this table, the um, options are different than when I click on this table. So you wanna make sure you're clicked in the proper table. And now I'm gonna add a filter, choose course modality again. And this time I'm gonna clear all of them and just look at the fully online. And now we can see the numbers have changed to this fashion. So these are the numbers that you will enter in as your SLO results. So 92% of students passed with the 76 and above, or however we classified it uh, for Psych 1, for Psych 16, it's 79%. Um, and that's how you use pivot tables. And then you'll see how down here I have a new pivot table for each year um, because my form response has every possible year in it. And then I'm only interested in the years that, um, that I'm reporting. So good luck and let me know if you have any questions.